we're Hello. live. Oh, we're live. This yes. is part two of biasing, explaining what bias is, why we need it in amps, and uh, hopefully give you a perspective of, of how amps work in a sense. Um, when people talk about biasing, typically they're talking about the output tubes, the preamp tubes in your amp are cathode bias, and they take care of themselves. And some guitar amps have cathode bias output sections like our Rambler, Viceroy, uh, Hammerhead, where you use match sets and the amp sort of sets its own bias. But uh, typically when people are talking about set us the, setting the bias, they're talking about fixed bias amps. But anyway, um, I want to show some little drawings I made to help illustrate what bias is and how it works. This little symbol, this circle, is a tube. This is called a plate. This is the cathode. And that's the grid. The grid is where your guitar signal ends up. Um, and it, in this simplified drawing, we've got a battery connected to this thing with plus at the, uh, at the plate and minus at the cathode. And the cathode and the minus are usually connected to ground, so that's why you see ground. Okay, if, if the tube didn't have the control grid, the grid, um, it's almost like this is a straight wire. As much current can flow as possible. All the electrons just want to go from, from here to here, just like you ran a piece of wire across that battery. Uh, the electrons, the negative part, the electrons are negative. Uh, and on the control grid, what you do, if you put in, let's say with no grid there, 100% electron flow. And now if you add a negative voltage to the grid, the grid gets negative, electrons are negative, like things repel, opposites attract. As you increase this negative voltage, at some point, the flow of electrons from the cathode to the plate will get lower. And that's the point of biasing. You set that, uh, you know, depending on the amp, let's say for this example, we set it to negative 5, and negative 5 means only 50% of the available electrons will flow. All right? Yeah, you might have to sleep on that. I did. First. All right, now this is a more complicated drawing. <laughs> Don't turn it off now. Uh, we have much the same situation here with the battery plus at the plate. Cathode is connected to ground as part of the battery is, so that's negative. Um, and we've got our grid biased at negative five, so half the electrons flow. Now, when your signal comes in to the grid, it's swinging up and down around zero. You've seen a sine wave before, but let's say it goes up to and down to swinging up and down. What that's going to do to this fixed 5 volts, you add these together. Hold on a second. Alright, so uh, we were talking about setting a negative 5 volts so that only half the electrons flow. Now your signal, guitar signal, let's say it's swinging up and down like a sine wave. Plus 2 volts, minus 2 volts, just swinging around. What that's going to do is it's going to add to the bias in a sense. So we'll have now this range from negative three to negative seven. That's negative five plus negative two is negative seven. Negative five plus two is negative three. Now remember this negative five was set so that only half the electrons would flow. When it gets more negative, less electrons flow. And when the grid gets more positive, more flow. So that's how when we set this bias, this idle point, then your music signal, guitar signal, can modulate that and create a copy of this signal at the plate. The grid, sorry about that, the grid, there you go. Now we're recording, okay. okay. Uh, the British call uh, tubes valves, and it's for that reason. It's like a valve, it's turning on and off. The control grid acts as, you know, a valve. Uh, modulating the flow of electrons through the tubes. So you can have a tiny signal here and yet create a really big current swing at the plate. Um, and so we've got grid, grid voltage minus cathode voltage equals our bias voltage. Grid voltage is negative 5 minus 0 volts. The uh, cathode's connected to ground, so we get negative 5 volts. All right, you're holding on. You're doing great. <laughs> it took me a long time. You know, I used to read these old books and uh, go to bed at night wondering what they meant in the morning sometimes. It made sense. 
but I just kept doing it. Um, all right, so that's fixed bias. This, is, this example is fixed bias, and this is very stripped down. Fixed meaning a fixed voltage. You apply a negative 5 to that grid, and that 5 is going to stay there no matter what else is happening. And uh, oddly, you have to adjust the bias on a fixed bias amp because you're adjusting this fixed point. Cathode bias amps or self bias amps, uh, there are a lot of them out there, very popular. A lot of the EL84 amps are cathode bias, some of ours, as I mentioned. They achieve bias in a different manner, and this is the same way preamp tubes achieve bias. Um, and it's slightly more complicated, but um, same situation. The plate is positive. This time, the grid, we connect to ground. So the grid is at zero volts. volts. But there's a, uh, a resistor in the cathode. And you can think of ground being the bottom and, and the plate being the top, in a sense. And this is like a ladder on your way up. So as current flows through the tube, there's a voltage drop here, which ends up being a rise. It's kind of confusing. But anyway, you're going toward this positive. So current flows through. And the cathode ends up at plus 5 volts. Now we remember our bias equals the grid minus the cathode voltage. The grid voltage is 0. The cathode voltage is 5. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. We've got that same bias situation here. We've just achieved it with a resistor in the cathode. Now you might wonder why do one or the other. Well, they'll tend to react differently. This uh, cathode bias amps tend to have more compression and it's because as your signal varies this bias point actually varies with current flow through the tube it, it just sort of this sort of a kind of a bouncy uh, thing the fixed bias is is fixed it's very firm it's very tight you know you think of a black face uh, American amp or you know a British amp classic rock those are uh, fixed bias amps and they tend to have a lot more headroom a lot more snap Cathode bias amps tend to be, you know, kind of a more mellow vibe and a little bit uh, sort of softer and more compressed. And it's because of this, this back and forth of the bias as signal flows through this. Now finally, uh, got a little map here. I wasn't sure if I should do this, but this, uh, you might want to watch it over and over and somebody might want to write in with other ideas. Or, but uh, what have I got here? Oh, I'm just illustrating a little bit more of the cathode bias. That, that V equals IR, which we talked about earlier, um, for sensing the bias. Uh, this cathode resistor, let's say, is 500 ohms. If we want to know the current through this tube, we've got the voltage, which we measured as 5, divided by the resistance, which is 500. That's 0.01 amp, or 10 milliamps. Um, just sort of showing how the relationship between current flow and that cathode resistor. And I just wrote this down. This is extreme generalization, but typical bias voltages for tubes. You might see something like 6L6, typically negative 48 volts. EL34, typically negative 36, etc. 66 mount 32. EL84 is about 10 volts. EL84s require so little bias, that's why they're usually cathode biased. This resistor does not have to be too big. Therefore, that kind of mellowness or, you know, compression is minimized because that resistor is less. I have a feeling I've gone too far. But <laughs> anyway, at least that's, that's sort of a primer and hopefully takes the mystery a little bit in a biasing and what's going on with it. So uh, is there any more to add? Perhaps uh, people sometimes vary the bias. They might mm -hmm. run the amp a little hotter or a little cooler. And that'll just vary how the amp reacts, basically. How it's ready to jump from a point when you're playing through it. How, how much headroom is left, in a sense. But anyway, uh, you can email questions or clarifications and maybe uh, I could do another one if there are any questions. Thanks. Until next time.